morning, I want to move with you Joseph Young's brother by the name of Benjamin. Benjamin. Amen. We got it. Amen. Benjamin. We're going to see what the Bible has to say about Benjamin by watching the gates. And this assures us of the Lord's presence. I don't know about you, but I want God's glory to always remain right here. Amen? Yeah. And I'm not just talking about faith fellowship. Even in our home, we want all to want the glory of God to always be there. And let me tell you something. The way for that to happen is that you need, you need to make certain you are protecting and watching the gates at your home. Yes. Yes. Watch what's happening at home. Watch what's trying to get into your windows. Okay? Watch what's it trying to come in the, in, in the back door of your house. Yes. All right? Yes. Now, come on, we're talking about the enemy. The enemy. And he wants to get in because he comes to do what? Steal, kill, and to destroy. Yes. And so you better make sure you're watching every avenue that the enemy might want to use to penetrate your home. Yes. Right? Yes. And to get in. And that way, God will become your Jehovah Shammah yes. so that you will always know the presence of the Lord is there. Right? Amen. So, moving on. The gate of Benjamin. What this gate is all about. The gate of Benjamin. Um, and I'll, and let's give a little bit of background on Benjamin here. First of all, we know he's the youngest, uh, he's the last son. He's the last son of Jacob. Okay? He's the last son of Jacob uh, and Rachel. Rachel only had two children, Joseph and Benjamin. Benjamin is the youngest of all of those 12 sons that we talk about. Okay? However, when Benjamin was, was first born, he was born biracial, of course, his mother, in a lot of pain, hard labor, it took to bring this boy into the world. Okay? Hard labor. And one of the things that I, I've come to realize, and even as you said in scripture, is this. I'm just realizing something that's to be birthed in your life and my life is going to require a lot of pushing. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. It's going to require a lot of birthing pains yeah. <coughs> to get that which God has planted in your heart to come to fruition. Right. Manifestation. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And, and so in bringing Benjamin into the world, Rachel had to press hard, real hard, mm -hmm. hard labor, the Bible said, it took to bring him in to the world. Mm -hmm. And of course, after birthing him, she ended up dying. And uh, she, she passed away. Okay? However, the blessing was here. But in, in the process of bringing him in to the world, the Bible says that um, Benjamin, Jacob's last son, moving on through some of this, uh, of course, he's along with Joseph and Nan, as far as the East Gate is concerned, she named him Ben Donai. Ben Donai. Mm -hmm. Which means son of my sorrow. Mm -hmm. Son of my sorrow. Once again, Great pains of labor to bring him into the world. Amen? All children, all, all of us in here, if your mother is still living, you ought to go love on her real hard. Don't wait for Mother's Day to do it. You need to do it today. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But I, I, I recognize we're living in modern time now. There's not a lot of labor that a lot of mothers use to bring. So we need that alone, right? Y'all right, right. dead and everything today. No pain, right? No pain. <laughs> but anyhow, she said, son of my sorrow, son of my sorrow, because it was lots of pain to bring him in. However, you keep reading, uh, Jacob renamed him. Jacob said, no, no, not son of my sorrow. Jacob named him Benjamin, and Ben means son, Yamin means right or right hand. Right or right hand. Now I want to say something here, and I want to turn to the scripture here too. Go uh, in your Bibles real quick, and let's look at. Um, um, uh, matter of fact, you don't have to go there. I'll, I'll just say this: uh, when this was happening, Jacob quickly said, "No, he will not be called Ben Nodai. He will be called Benjamin, son of my right hand." Son of my right hand. Now, I, I want to just say something here. And this is a word to, um, you know, fathers right now. Fathers. To be fathers or just fathers in general. And that is this. See, Jacob stepped in. Mm -hmm. He stepped in. And you know what he did? He actually changed this boy's destiny. Yeah. 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 
He changed his destiny. His mother said, son of my sorrow. He said, no, no, I will not allow my son to grow up and to be called son of my sorrow. I will not allow him to be picked at by other kids and called son of sorrow. I'm changing that situation right now, right now. This is what Jacob did. Now, let me say this, and this is so important that we, we recognize it, is that we're living at a time right now where fathers who should be available, because if a father is there in the life of his children or child, child or children, he can change the course, the destiny for that boy or that girl. Yes. At the very beginning, yes. at the very beginning, Jacob refused and no, this is not going to be the future of my son. I'm changing this right now. Yes. Right now. But we got too many, too many children coming into the world today where fathers are nowhere around. Yes. Y'all don't tell me the truth. Yes. How many babies are born in hospitals? The mother is there, but the father is nowhere around. Not in the waiting room. There used to be a place in the time to say, well, father's in the waiting room. Okay. Right? Waiting for mom to come out and the baby. But no, fathers are not even in the waiting room. Matter of fact, they're not even in the hospital all together. Right. You can't even find them in the parking lot. <laughs> okay? Right. This is the kind of world we're living in today. Yeah. Amen, y'all. Yeah. Okay? And I want y'all to, I want y'all to, if anything this morning, I want you to focus on one thing, and that is right. Because we're going to understand what right hand means. In a moment here. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. But they're not nowhere around. So no wonder these babies who have no fathers, because all, all, all they want is the pleasure, all right? And then they leave the mother there to raise the child all by herself. Yeah. Oh, y'all don't tell me the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. The mother's left there to raise that child all by herself. Right. And and what you, what, what you end up with then is young boys getting into a lot of trouble. Because dad is nowhere around. Right? He's not there to help mold and shape that boy. He's not there to change his destiny like Jacob did here. The father is not there to do it. So therefore the boy grows up and gets in a lot of trouble. Girls grow up because dad's not there. And they, they, they begin to get abused by older men. Let's just call it as it is. Yes, yes, yes. They get abused by all the men because they're looking for love, but they're looking for the same one in the wrong place. Right? What is going to be the one who calls me to get God is going to take care of me. So I'm going to do a job. Keep your stuff. So I'm going to keep your stuff.